It's time for episode 64 of Chit Chat as we prepare to throw down our lists of our favorite worker placement games of all time. So sit back and relax as we drop all kinds of knowledge about the games that keep us keeping on. Welcome back to Chit Chat. Hey everybody, we are here today to talk about our top five. We're going to go top ten, but we thought that may have been like an hour and a half, two hour episode. So we're going to talk about our top five games, uh, worker placement games of all time. Like these are the best games that we consider, uh, and probably all on our shelves, our personal shelves. I can't imagine any of us talking about a game that we don't personally own and wouldn't back. Are you going to put it something, Kira? You're going to show us something? I don't even want to see it yet. If you're going to put something up in front of us, no. I'm just no, getting ready for you, you to talk about I you were the winner. Speak something. Uh, I will talk about the winner, but welcome, uh, Kira, Ryan, and we have Jeremy Howard with us today. To, hey, uh, what's up, hey, party people. Hey, party uh, people. How you doing? We're doing awesome, man. No, yeah. David, because he is getting ready for some old man stuff. As you know, yes. David is his 50s, so he's got he's to take care of some stuff. So that's why we are here today. Anyway, he hit 50 years old. That was the that was hey, the end, is what you're I, saying? I'm not too far behind him. I'm only five years behind him, so there I'm getting go. there. It'll happen. He is to me the old too. man of MVM. That's for he sure. is the old man <laughs> MVM. All right. So before we get into that, let's talk about the winner from last week. We gave around uh, gave away an excellent copy of Nemesis Lockdown, which is on Kickstarter from Awakened Realms. That is Whoa. going to Sandy Hazelar. Congratulations. Uh, I want a copy. I still need to go back that game. But all you have to do is email us at manversusmeeple at gmail.com to claim your prize. This week, we're giving away a very timely game. It's called Agizia Shifting Sands. Uh, one of my favorite worker placement games. I've loved this game for years. It was remade last year from Indie Boards and Cards. Well, Stronghold, um, actually. So, and Stronghold. Yeah. Well, there you go. Thank you. From Stronghold Games. And uh, so just make a comment below, and you're going to be entered to win that one all right like, are you guys go ahead well i like all the commenters are already shouting out all of their favorite mm -hmm. worker placement games and trying to guess ours i wonder how many how accurate people are going to be well today. you know the funny thing is uh we've been pretty boisterous about worker placement games it's one of our favorite genres if not some of our favorite genres genres of all time like we love this style of game we're all heavy euro gamers so we've talked about a lot of the games that will be on this list for a while although in the past couple of years they've been some titles that have snuck in and replaced other titles so just stay tuned to that um uh jay how yeah. like do you like worker placement games <laughs> so i'm into worker placement games but i also have this weakness for if you follow me anywhere i like cards i just love cards sure. so there's a lot of that like if there's a lot of card games coming into this euro field but i do have you know at the top of my list of games there are some some uh worker placement games so i i realized it was it was a fight to get this top five going so it was a fight <laughs> Before we start our top five, is your number one game, you don't have to tell us what it is, is your number one game of all time a worker placement game or no? Yeah, it is. Ooh. It is? Okay. Yeah. That's interesting. So my, my no, list kind of is It's not at all. It's not, <laughs> it's not all right. at all true. My second favorite game. <laughs> it's my second favorite game of all time. But yeah, my first that's is fair. Mage Knight. This is not... Oh, that's true. Not for Hey, our... Mage Knight, you have a worker. It's the mage. You move him yeah. around. The... No, he's working. A he's working he's around definitely working. You're working when you play Mage Knight. <laughs> so... We should, I think it'd be interesting. So I know we always talk about like how we build our lists before we jump into our list. So we should yeah. go around and talk about how we built our list because I, it, these are top games, but they may be, there might be some reasons why we chose them going into it that I think would be interesting for everybody here. So why don't we start with, let's go in reverse order this time. Jeremy Howard. What? Yeah. You know, you know what, when I made this list, I thought about five definitive games that like represent who I am. So I, I oh. went deeper. I went I went deep inside mm. my soul for this one. I was like, if somebody were to ask me, like, dude, what kind of games do you like? And I was like, whoa, worker placement's like a tough competition. Um, so what five games have you read? You're like, oh, man, he likes some pretty interesting, different, diverse games. So I, I think everybody's going to be surprised on my list. I don't think there's going to be any overlap at all. At all. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. Uh, yeah. Ryan? We'll at see. All. So I looked back at worker placement games as a whole and i love worker placement games i mean that's my favorite genre so i probably could have named any five worker placement games and i would love them so what i did was i looked back to my history as a gamer so maybe my list is going to be a little shocking to some people because i looked at games that i played that kind of got me into this or 
showed me that worker placement games can do something different. So I chose five games that I feel like have taken that worker placement and kind of put a twist on it. I, I think most of my games are, are pretty classic. So we'll, we'll see. I have a lot of guesses in the comments are games that came out within the last year or two. Yeah. So oh, nice I, might, I might be letting them down. So we'll see. Yeah. Well, yeah. And I would say, so speaking of how I built my list, I had a hard time because there are games I've only played once or twice that I really want to put on this list. But for me, I want to make sure there are games right. I played enough to say they're in my top five, even though there are games I definitely feel like I could easily put in the place of some of these if I just get a few more plays in. Uh, but That's... to that, I mean, I'm seeing some of those in the comments already, some that I absolutely love when I had one or two plays, but it's not quite enough plays as the ones that are on my list. Jeremy? All right, so what's everybody's number seven? <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. Jeremy, how'd you put your list together? Uh, well, I mean, it's no secret. Worker placement <laughs> games are kind of like my bread and butter. It's what I've always enjoyed in the hobby. So um, I consider myself kind of an expert when it comes to uh, worker placement games. I played a lot of them, and uh, it's really hard to choose. There, as Ryan said, there is just a lot of really, really good worker placement games. So I tried to choose games that uh, I've played a lot and will never, ever, ever leave my collection. And they're also, I think, essential games that if you have a friend who... Uh, is on the cusp of playing games like these are games that are really good and should be introduced to people and should can uh, despite the fact that there some of these are a lot of these are really older games um mm. they should still be played uh, you know it's so many new way. games come out every year well yeah every well not all of them trust me not all of them there's so many new games every year and a lot of them carry that worker placement label to them uh, but they all do things in a lot of different ways so i have a mixture of like wor true worker placement games some dice placement games some even games that use workers in really unique ways that uh i've not seen them used in other games before so you yeah. you cheat you cheat what dice placement no, no way. Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, oh, dice yeah, placement a, show. Dice this placement. is a worker we'll, placement. We'll talk about that. Dice we'll placement as that. worker five, placement is a it, thing. It's a thing. Fives it's a fives become sixes. Sixes become ones. That is a different right. ball game. All right, I, will, I will challenge you as I go through my list. <laughs> yeah. You point out one that doesn't make sense as a worker placement game. Okay. So, Same. All right. I, I expected a little blowback on mine, too. I think, so we'll I think we all we have there. at least one other than... Jeremy Howard. So why don't we then, Mr. Uh, uh, I Love Euros, they're my favorite uh, worker placement. Yeah. Jeremy, why don't you take it away? You see. Okay. So my number five, I had to choose between two games that I feel are very equal. And that is Uwe Rosenberg's Caverna and Uwe Rosenberg's Agricola. Um, and they are very close in the BGG scale. In fact, Caverna is over Agricola, but I put Agricola over Caverna. Uh, it was originally released in 2007. It's the Quiz of Central Worker Placement game. It's been revised a number of times. Uh, there's a couple things that I find it better than Caverna, and I'll mention those right now. Caverna walks a very similar line each time you play it. It's very good. Like, it's one of the best worker placement games, but there's not a whole lot of deviation in that game. Agricola, I feel like you can have really good games, you can have really bad games, just because of those cards that you're able to get, the occupation cards and the... Um, uh, the improvement cards. And as you gain those, the way you can manipulate those with your buildings is really, really different. So it feels like there's a lot more variety for me personally in those two games. It's really hard to pick the two because they're both equal footing. Like they're both really solid. But Agricola is just, it's fantastic. And I've played that game dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of times. And I still don't feel like I've seen all the cards that are in that game because there's there's literally hundreds of cards that you can play yeah. with which just varied the game even more. So that's my number five, and I stand by that. It, it's a fantastic game. A good choice. All right. So that's a good choice. Let's go and Ryan next, maybe? Me next. Yeah, why not? All right, so I chose... This is a worker placement game that I think is it's an older game, but still one of my favorite worker placement games, and that's Keyflower. I think this game is incredibly solid in the way that it uses worker placement because... The workers that you get in Keyflower, you both have to use them to actually place them on spots and use those actions. You also have to take those workers and use them to bid on tiles. And when you get those tiles, you have to put them in your city. And again, you have to use your workers on those spots. So you have to make these decisions constantly. You can even place your workers on other, place, uh, other players' locations, but then they get those workers at the end of the round. So it's all about kind of collecting 
sets of workers because once somebody plays a color, you have to always match that color. And I think there's maybe five different colors of uh, workers that you can manipulate in this game. And I think the way that these tiles all work together, uh, and of course, when you start adding expansions as well, you start getting all these different combos. And it's a complete point salad game. I mean, you've got in-game tiles, you've got points for workers, you've got in-game cards, you've got tiles in, in themselves that that score, and you have to upgrade them. So there's just a lot going on in Keyflower, but I think it all comes together in a very satisfying way for me. And I, I teach Keyflower all the time. Like I still love that game because it's easy enough for a gateway, but also it has a lot of complex depth for somebody that games at my level. I can still really enjoy that. So definitely recommend Keyflower. Yeah, I would say that too. I mean, Keyflower has been emulated by the designer himself many times with a lot of different uh, attempts at some of those same mechanisms, yeah. but it's never been the same as the original Keyflower, which to this day is a really, really good game. So it's a good choice. Kira? So well, I was actually going to say I want Jerry Harrow to go because I've been watching him make this smirk on his face <laughs> this whole time and he commented to the group here gameplay over everything until i start my list so i want him uh -oh. to go because i need i need him to get this mean? out because look at the space he's got uh -oh. he's laughing uh -oh. so hard okay so I, I have a thing that i believe in just gameplay over everything sometimes i feel like themes like hide you know like hide oh, a game sure. that's mediocre yep yeah and we you know and you often hear that over and over again especially on kickstarter games you know mm -hmm. Um, but I always say, no matter what, no matter how ugly it is, like I love Valletta. It is the ugliest card game ever. <laughs> you know, like, but I love it, you know, and that's the thing. It's gameplay over everything. Sometimes you get that engine burn and you're like, I like this game and it looks terrible. I hope they make a 2.0 five years from now, you know, yeah. so that's kind of how I feel about those things. Um, but for some reason, my top five is very thematic. So, uh, <laughs> so starting with anachrony. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. Boy. <laughs> Man, you start off heavy too. Like that, yeah. you have nowhere to go but easier than that. <laughs> Starting with Anachrony, one of the most thematic games you'll ever play. So, um, so in Anachrony, you are basically the world is about to you know be, be destroyed. It's it, it's imminent. It's going to happen. It's going to happen at a certain amount of rounds. I believe eight rounds. And what you're doing is preparing yourself. You're preparing your workers, a different type of workers, scientists, all these different specialists, and then you're going out into this world that's de is destroyed it's about to be destroyed and you're taking these awesome miniatures so if you can afford a 40 extra dollars you can get those wonderful miniatures and put your little little uh, cardboard guys inside of them and go place them once and then get something and put them back <laughs> you know so it's really thematic plus the scientists and different specialists go into your lab which is like your area and like create stuff and open you know open up the game i i uh, and and this is the biggest me mechanism in the game is time. You get to basically go back in time or steal from the future to do things and create super projects, which is just, it's mind-blowing. <laughs> it is mind-blowing to see. And then halfway through the game, it's destruction. And it takes away from the board. It restricts spots from the board. That game does so many things. And you will never, you never feel like you're, even though you know what's going to happen as far as the destruction in the game, you know, like that part. It never feels the same. Like you have to use different strategies, and they created so many of those 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 uh what are they called development areas, and also those super projects that you'll never get to them. You'll feel different every time you play it. You just have to feel like setting it up for twenty minutes. But yeah, <laughs> but it's a serious. It's it's a great hour and a half, two hours of you know. Yeah. Man, just wait till great. the expansion comes out, man. It adds even more yeah. content, more areas, more cards. It's crazy. So I got to challenge high. you, Jeremy. You, you had mentioned that, uh, you know, the game doesn't have to look great, but that game just <laughs> wouldn't look fantastic with that art or with those miniatures. <laughs> like playing with those miniatures elevates that game. Just the simple, as you said, slotting those in. There's a tactile thing that goes on there uh -huh. with your brain. And when you do it, that connects you to the game. And if you didn't yeah. have that, you would feel different, right? It Absolutely. would. And you know, there's this one module in there where it's like, it's on the sideboard and you go and it's like, you go on a mission outside the board yep. and mm -hmm. do this thing. And, and you know what? It may not be the best action in the game. It just feels awesome to do that. Yeah, you know? exactly. <laughs> it's like, I don't even know if I'm wasting my time or not, but I'm going to waste my time and go out in this yeah, thing. That game is you know? just and super it's like, thematic. Because it seems cool. And like, 
Yeah, that that one's it's great solo. That guy that that bot that chrono bot is very complex to beat. It's tough to beat. And once I know it's tough to beat and it's gonna make me scratch my head, yep, let's do it. Kira, what you got for your number five? I feel like it's probably no surprise that everybody is going to expect that I have the worker placement Tiny Epic on my list, and that is correct. I have Tiny Epic Kingdoms on my list with an asterisk. Two, actually. One is that I like it best with Hero's Call, which is the expansion that came out later for it. I think it improved the game in a way that made it really great. It added these cool hero cards where you can level up your hero. Um, you uh, You have new resources to mine. Overall, it just, it took an already good, very, and so like my list is going to have a kind of a theme to it, whereas a lot of my games that are on this list for worker placement, because it is a favorite of mine, are ones that I can play often with not hobby gamers, right? Because it is, it is one, they're just very easy to teach. And that's one of the best things about Tiny Epic Games. Now, the second asterisk there, of course, is that uh, I should say I have, like everything tiny epic and you guys know this so like back when it first came out it had all these meeples you could buy from meeple source i spent like five times as much on the meeples than i did on the game uh so i'm a little bit weird like that but the other thing here is that there is a new worker placement game that is a tiny epic game that i'm pretty sure is going to not only kick kingdoms off this list but probably move something else down because i liked it so much in the initial plays and that's dinos but it's not out yet, and I haven't played the final. So I don't feel comfortable putting that one on my list yet. But it is it is great, and uh, and I do expect it to be on this list long term. So that's my uh, my number five. Um, let's see here. I think that does it. Number four? That'd be number four. So this four, is everybody's right? fives yeah. real quick, and it just is a yep, quick that's recap. that's our fives. Uh, let me go ahead and boop there. Recapped. So Boom. Uh, number four. Yeah, I can start talking about my four. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So number four is going to surprise, I think, most of you guys here. Jeremy, I don't play enough games with you for you Uh-oh. to understand my choice here, but Underwater Cities is my number four. Yep, that's... And uh, I, if anyone knows me or followed any of my uh, you know, comments on BGG about this game, I do feel like there's some strategies in the game with the right combination of cards can really be punishing for other players. And I've abused those strategies numerous <laughs> times. That's I have, and that's been diluted with the expansion. But there is something in Underwater Cities that triggers a part of my brain that I cannot deny that I absolutely love, and that's the card play in this game. Yeah. Like it feels yeah. like terraforming Mars, uh, where you have all these cards and you're making decisions about how to use them and how to make one card interact with another card. And there's so many different cards, especially with New Discoveries expansion, that you're constantly trying to figure out. What do I do next? But the even better thing, and this is probably true of any worker placement game, um, but especially in underwater cities, the way that the worker placement spots are so different than each other, as a round plays out, your decisions become far less interesting. And that's cool yeah. for me because you are fighting on what action you want to take with those tiles. Where do I want to go next? And can I use this crappy action that I didn't want to take to the best of my ability? Or can I get a card that may make that crappy action really good on a future round? And I, I every time I play that, despite that strategy that I go through, that is always satisfying, more than just about any other game that you can play. And Underwater Cities excels at doing that every time that I play the game. Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah, I, just, I really love Underwater disagree Cities. disagree with you. We played it a bunch, and I think I even told you yesterday that this was on on my list. I just haven't played it enough, right? I, I need to play right. it more. It was hard for me to... But it definitely, I was fighting. I was like, have I? can I say that I've played it enough over this one or this one? It's a great game, and I and I think that's and, one of those things that you hit on really good is how do I optimize the situation I'm left with best? I really do yeah. like that about yeah. the game. Yeah. So that's my four. Ryan, what do you have? You are next up. My number four is, as a lot of people in the comments have mentioned <laughs> over and over again, is A Feast for Odin. And I'm, I'm with Jeremy, where I was looking at all these Rosenberg games because I love his worker placement games. I also love Agricola, Caverna. But Feast for Odin, I feel like, is like the magnum opus for me. It has it has a lot going on uh, to the point where you can look at that board and say, this is just too overwhelming. There's like, what, 60-something different actions you can take in the game. But once you kind of yeah. understand how those work, it's not hard to play. Oof. But there's a lot of cool stuff going on with the collecting items and the crafting <laughs> items. And 
turning items into different items and everything. So yeah, it's, it's a really great game. Um, <laughs> I gotta say, man, Feast for Odin makes me stressed out anymore. Like I really yeah. liked that game when it came out like three, three years ago. <laughs> Why is Jay how laughing? We were both laughing <laughs> because <laughs> of the comments. I have no idea. Chat, man, the guys in the chat is killing it, man. They're killing it in the chat. Anyway, <laughs> they're talking about your love for kelp right now, by the way. T Jeremy, 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 Jeremy loves is, kelp. Says that Jeremy Salinas I is my Jesus. Kelp. Oh my god. So we're having we're uh, laughing. Sorry. Continue. Continue. No, we'll it's okay. I like the comment section. That's that's why we do it live, is because I like seeing those. But yeah, anyway, Feast uh, for Odin. Everyone in the comments already knows because they've been saying Feast for Odin for the past 15 minutes. It's just a really solid worker placement game that does a lot of unique things that you don't see in other worker placement games. I I agree. There's there's a lot of things I love about that game. That little board where you have to put your stuff does become stressful for me. For, I don't know why it makes me stress out, it's but like, it has. The last time I played the game, it didn't feel the same. And that's with the addition of the expansion. I don't know if I don't like the game as much as I used to, but I just find it a real simplicity in Caverna, like Nushford and, and, sure. and uh, Agricola compared to Feast for Odin, which I agree, it, it is his magnus opus. It takes all of those things and mashes it together into a good game, but it's just, it's almost too much at times. Let's just be honest though, my list could have been just all five of those games mm -hmm. and I would have been satisfied with That's it. That's the thing, so, so many I'd good work one, right? Yeah. I think that I, I, was so close to making my list. That game is fantastic. It is just absolutely fantastic. Yeah, it, it is his. It is him. It's his defining game in a sense. It is everything mushed together. So yeah. So what is your number what four? Is your, what's your four? Oh wow, this is not. I know this is not anybody on anybody's list. It is the pursuit of happiness. Oh, that's actually uh, a great that's game. That's a good game. It's a great it is a game. So the one thing I really love about playing this game with people is like, first of all. You, this is not an entry level game. <laughs> this is not like not at all. And if I did, I'm like, we're going to be here for two hours, and this is not entry level. Um, but what you're basically doing is, is you're going through a story over nine rounds. You started as a teenager, you move all the way up through your age and your adult age. And what you're doing is, is you're going through activities. You can do projects. You can be a superhero, depending on how many expansions you have. You can join a superhero crew. Uh, you could be a gamer. You can be a vegetarian very young. Uh, you can do all kinds of silly stuff, but you invest time. So the time is these markers that make you go around and, and, and grab resources, but ultimately you're trying to get a job. You could level up your job. You're trying to get married or find a girlfriend or have two girlfriends so you can stress yourself out. <laughs> you can live a lavish life. Um, they have a community expansion where you're just like doing things to help other people. And if they like you, you live a more purposeful life. Uh, they have a newer one where it's like life experiences where you can uh, go travel the world. Uh, I think last game I played, I was like a marathon runner who was a vegetarian. And then like I died riding a unicorn before I died. <laughs> it was crazy. Like with my last worker place, I was like, I think I can only ride a unicorn to win this game. But it, it's awesome because at the end of the game, you actually die. You actually die. There's, you can't stop it from happening. It's only a matter of time before you do. And uh, when you do die, it's awesome to tell this full story about how silly your life was. You can lay out the cards and just make up something. And uh, I love that part. That's why I'm telling you about riding a unicorn. It was like, <laughs> I'm so funny. late my age, I wrote a unicorn. But yeah, you can do a lot of cool There's stuff. There's another expansion coming out for that. So do you have all of them? I have all of them. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. I Whatever they come out with. I want all of it. It's a game that people, I, I, I think, look away from because of the way it looks. The art style is a little more comical. The game looks like it would be a light gateway game. And uh, my wife actually found that game and said, hey, I want to play this one because she thought that as well. Turned out we were there for you know two hours playing Oops. that game, but, but she loved it. She absolutely loved it, and now we own it. Um, and I think that it's a testament to not judging games by the artwork style, right? Because the artwork does fit the game. It's a great worker placement, though, like, I'd say give it a chance. Yeah, Jeremy, I, 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 Jeremy, I think... Uh, <laughs> You've got a fan in the comments. <laughs> you know, what, what? I need to start reading the comments. Jerry, What's going I on? think it's the shirt, man. I think it's, I the, think shirt. it's the shirt. Oh, my pink shirt? Like I think, pink. You guys I think, like my pink shirt? I think Jeremy's going for the June calendar look right now, and I think <laughs> it's, it's working. It's I think spring. It's work. it breaks out I wear the, the same one. thing too often. I am wearing my pink shirt. It's his Throwing spring wardrobe. You don't, you don't know? Like he has a, he has a so. different wardrobe for every I like season. It. Come on, people. <laughs> I like it. I like my shirt. Does anybody else have anything yeah. on I can Pursuit make of Happiness? 
Oh, yeah. No, I, I, need, I need to get that back to the table. Sure. I've, I played that years ago, and I've not yeah. played any expansions, so I need to obviously play We should play, play it when those. the new expansion comes out, which is Absolutely. the summer. No. Deal. So let's do it. Deal. Kira, or So for me, this is one that, this is one of the very first worker placement games other than Kingdoms that I got. And I got it at a show, and this is a publisher that has become one of my very favorites, and that is uh, Red Raven Games and Artifacts, Inc., uh, I love this. Now, this is a dice worker placement game. So yell at me all you want, but it is what it is. Uh, that'd, be, that'd be Jay Howe yelling. Right, not right, me. right. I agree with you. I, I count those. I do too. And it, the thing is, is that <laughs> I, it, it actually is one and it says it's one. And um, I, the thing I like about this game is how, again, easy and accessible it is to get to the table. You have a lot of different options and how you're going to level up your adventurer who's trying to build this, uh, you know, gallery, if you will. And so how am I going to get all of these wonderful different things that I discover along my adventures into a very profitable, uh, you know, museum or whatever gallery to, to show it off. And it's just a very, it's very simple. It's very quick. Get it to the table. It plays great at two, uh, which is a lot of times the games I was playing, especially early in my, uh, getting into the hobby. And, uh, you know, frankly, I love everything that Ryan draws. It's beautiful. And uh, Red Raven Games is a great publisher, and they make several games that I enjoy. So um, this was the beginning of a love for Red Raven, and, and uh, it's a great worker placement game. I can teach it to anybody and very quickly, and it gets to the table. It sets up quick. Uh, we play quick. We're out of it quick. And it's just a great game. So Artifact Inc., all right, okay. we are on to our number three. Is that right? I believe so. All right, so my three. my number three uh, is Zulkin. Uh, this mm -hmm. is a Daniele Tashini game. I just covered Tekenyo uh, a week or so ago. Um, his games are phenomenal. Uh, Zulkin is no exception. Uh, there's a lot of reasons why I like Zulkin. One is, um, how can I say this and not sound weird? I... I like games that are really punishing, and most people don't. Like mm -hmm. People like to play their games and have fun with them and not make mistakes where they pursue them for the rest of the game. Yeah. Zulkin is not that game. Zulkin is a game where you have to make your choices and make them count, because as these dials turn, you can get screwed. And I, mm -hmm. I personally love that about this game. Like I find it to be extremely mathy, and I love that about games. Like I'm a mathy person by nature, and this game just appeals to me. But the other thing is... like. This game was made, I don't even know when. It was 2000 and something. It's been a while. And uh, Ryan, you, can you look it up as I'm talking about this? But it's been at least eight years. And there's been nothing that I can think of that even closely mimics what's going on in Zulkin. Like, there's no other game that has interchangeable gears that uses that mechanic in any different way. Like, this is purely a very unique yep. 2012. So eight years. It's been eight years, and there's been nothing. And this is a this is an industry of mimicry, mimicry, good or bad. And there's nothing that's mimicked this. And it's just really, really unique. And yeah. I've I've loved it since the moment it came out. Um, I think a couple years ago we did our top ten games of all time, and it was my number two game of all time. Um, and it's still up there. Like I will never get rid of this game. I've painted my game, which I think Kira may have shown mm -hmm. on the screen. I just I love it. I'm, I'm fascinated. Oh, yeah, I remember it's quite beautiful. Those, your your gears look really cool. So. That's Zulkin. That's, that's a great game, too. I mean, High, that's a, highly recommend it. A classic. But I highly recommend any of the games he's made. Like, if you like Euro games, Tashini is just a remarkable designer. So yeah, I'm discovering is. Tashini now. Kind of start. Oh, yeah. yeah. You and I had a very, uh, Jay Hal, a very weird discovery of Tris Magistus. I was there. Yes. At Gen Con <laughs> two years ago. We started playing at like six o'clock at night and started yeah. at like, in at like 11. It was oh, a I feel there. like it was later than that Ooh. because I got a text like at 1 a.m. that said, my "Oh, we eye. my eyes!" I was like, "You <laughs> we were we sleeping. Doing? You were literally falling asleep." <laughs> yeah, the, you did fall asleep at one point. The, I did. The first the, when I play, like I love heavy games, but for some, I could not. I just could not do that one. Oh it's my god! It's such an interesting man, because, game, but, but it burned my brain. But, but I have it now, and it's gonna get a full. It's gonna get the full rundown. So I'm excited. I'm excited about it. So yeah. Cool. Ryan? Yeah. Let me know your thoughts. There was one there, right. there, was one move in there that, that made me happy. I don't know. <laughs> three. Uh, three, Ryan. Three. Now, this one might be a little controversial, but I'm, oh. I'm willing to defend this to my death. And that is Twa, 
which there is a big schism on whether or not Twa counts as a worker placement game because it's kind of two things at once. It is a dice drafting game and it is a worker placement game. And you place your workers to get die and you place your workers to use those dice. Now, the driving mechanic of the game is drafting dice and using them on these spaces, but if you haven't placed your workers correctly or prepared for spending your workers, then you're kind of out of luck in this game. And I think Twa is is brilliant. I mean, Jeremy, I know you're a big fan of the game in general. And the reason I put this on my list is because, because it does marry those two mechanics in a very interesting way that I have not seen outside of Twa. Like just this idea of you, you have all these cards that are your action spots, but when you place a worker on that spot, you're basically unlocking it for yourself for the rest of the game. And from that point on, then you can kind of spend your dice to activate that worker that's already out on the card. So it, it's very different, but it's also very competitive. Uh, all of these action card spots only have two spaces. So, you know, once two workers are on there, that's it. No one else is going to get to use that action. And these actions are very limited. More come out throughout the game. You have armies that you have to fend off and challenges you have to complete, again, by placing these workers. So I well, think just, it's... Just to correct you, since I know Twa very well, you actually can have more than two workers. <laughs> is there a way to have more than two? You just don't score points for them, but you can still use the action. Okay, well, so yeah, you boom. do. I mean, I know you know Twa really well, but yeah. I mean, there's I've seen people say I don't know if it's a worker placement game, but the the worker placement element it's, of Twa is my favorite part yeah. about that game. Like, you really yeah. have to plan ahead. The way that you can shape your dice pool by using your workers is very smart. So, all right, so Twa, uh, J How, J How, you got uh, number three, three. Huh. Oh, come on, man. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Oh, oh my game. goodness. Oh. Like, Jeremy's oh, disappointed he, with this. He can't. He doesn't remember making this list. He's oh, overwhelmed this is, this is by top the, the, the whole point this, of it. This, this game means so much to me. Oh, awesome. The gallerist. The gallerist. Oh, thing. yeah. Oh, I see it right there beautiful. behind you. I've been, I've been having oh. my eye on it. Oh, man. Lacerda is my favorite designer. If you can't tell, I like his games. Just a little. <laughs> oh, man. That game's great. Um, <laughs> so picture yourself coming into the hobby first year, kind of back into it. And you're, you know, it, it was very early that I realized like, I like these heavy kind of complex games. Galaris is in that it's a weird area. It's not, it is in a heavier game, but and then, you know, when people say like, once you get the hang of it, you know, like, no, it's, it's a game that you could play a couple of times and never get an engine purn and figure out how to promote your artists, you know, how to get the combo of your visitors correct. Uh, but basically what you're doing is, is like you're kind of a promoter of artists. So you're trying to get around. You're trying to find the people with the right pieces. And it's almost like, who made those pieces? And then it's like, hey, I like this talent. Well, I'll promote that talent and make them better and better. And then we'll sell his artwork and we'll make a lot of money. So it's like, it's very, uh, it looks so simplistic. And it's just the graphic design is so clutch. And I love that. <laughs> I love that the artwork in there is just so terrible. <laughs> Like it's so abstract and terrible, but the it looks so clean, and uh, yeah, it just once you get the rhythm of how that game plays, you're like, wow! Like I actually, this is a perfect example of you buy a game and you you're worried about the theme, then you play it, and then you go, wow, this is actually kind of playing the theme. Like it really is playing the theme because you want to find a way to jump off the artist at the right time so you can get you know get your you know get your money out of them or get your points out of them. Uh, you're taking on these contracts. So it's almost like, hey, I got this artist. They can do this for me. And then you bring them over there and you're like, wow, this actually works. Like if you think about it, you know, you're probably losing if you're thinking about it too much. But <laughs> I, I, I was like, how? Oh, they actually pulled off a little theme in here. And uh, that was my first love with Lacerda. That was my so let me, first. Let, let me, since I have you here, let me ask you a question. I like Lacerda, but I find a lot of his games to be almost too complex at times. Although yeah. I do love Venus, mm -hmm. like Venus, yeah. I find to be a better game than 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 the Gallerist. Uh, why did you pick the Gallerist over like maybe that or Lisboa or something like that? Uh, it's probably it's probably the flow of the game. Uh, I just like the flow of the game. I like uh, you know, and it actually this is the thing. It actually has like a little bit of viniculture in it, so it's like a little bit place bump. You know, place bump. I realized that too because it was like I played viniculture the same year, so I think it is that place bump. I get actions. Yeah. Um, this one you get, you know, the Lacerda way. The Lacerda way. There's only two actions. 
you just get right. 16 extra ones. <laughs> 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 you know? there, there's these things called executive actions in all his games, and that's really a whole other player aid. So <laughs> yeah, really on Mars yeah, as well. Yes. Right. So it's yeah. like that, that. I don't know what it is, but the flow of that one is just more digestible. I think Venus is a beautiful experience it is a great experience and that has a whole different flow too lesboa is basically a, a brochure of a game <laughs> um, and uh, on mars is quite the daunting task it is a very heavy game uh, but finally i think escape plan is awesome people don't talk yeah. about that game a lot uh, on mars makes me have to yeah. take a deep breath just the thought of it I yeah think, <laughs> i think gallerist is i think gallerist is fantastic uh, but like what you said you're only doing one thing basically you're just moving workers <laughs> like it's very easy to play <laughs> Um, but not to learn. I, you know, I, I, go ahead. I'll, my son just opened the door and let the dog and him dad oh, come running downstairs. Nice. <laughs> yeah, you talked about literally like taking one worker and you could go in a circle and it seems like the actions are super easy, you know? Yeah. And then it's like, oh, okay, that's how the game works. But then, so it's just I think I, I think Kira kind of mentioned it. Like those are the games. The games are great, but it's really hard to get to the table, especially if you're not teaching and you haven't played it in a while, like, that is true. like I played on Mars, I learned the rules. I made notes everywhere in the rule book. I taught Kira. We sat down, we played it. We paused for uh, like two weeks. We're like, we need to get back to the table. And I was like, there's no way I'm going to re relearn all these rules. There's just too I much going on. I watched Paul Rogan's video. I Mars so much. I, I, play, I watched Paul yep. Rogan's video like twice before oh. we played, plus Jeremy's <laughs> teach. And I'm like... I'd have to I'd have to watch Paul again. We'd have to do the whole thing again to play it. It'd be hours yeah. to get it back to the table. Right. Yeah. Right. So what happens if I have a scientist on my end? Can I use I'm, it over I'm there? I'm telling you, that game is brilliant. It's, it's it just, was it super takes so cool, many though. plays. Yeah, I enjoyed the play. Yeah. I just I don't know that I have yeah. the energy to bring it back. Speaking of energy, yeah, David's in the comments, yeah, and he asked if anyone's brought up Energy Empire yet, and that is a big no so, so, so far. Uh, well, wait, this, so so. So, it was going to be in my top five. I'm sorry, Luke Laurie. You have to be in the chat. I know you he are. Is. Because he's like, Luke's I'm a big chat. fan of his. I'm a big fan of his. He knows he's, you know how I feel about that game. But, like, let's not do that. I know. It should be in my top five. Ooh, have, you, ha, have you played Dwellings yet? Ooh, that's yes. good. I yeah. love because that's Dwellings. Got some, yeah. That's got some energy yeah. empire yeah. in it as well. Yeah, yeah. it really does. Yeah. I'm sorry. Hey, Kevin's I'm in the sorry. comments too. I'm Kevin, we'll, we'll get to <laughs> it. Kevin, you got to tell everybody what your uh, what your favorite worker placement right. games are now that you're we're here. On, so we're still on number three. three I've yeah, got to bring we? mine up, so I'll just jump in so we can keep oh, it going. Yeah. Mine is Everdell, uh, and just base Everdell because I have I've only played Pearlbrook once with you, Ryan. But just overall, like, yeah. will I get the expansions out for everybody else? Maybe it probably something I'm going to do more for myself than anything else because having to add all that content to a first time player, which is who I will probably play this with most of the time or only a couple time player. Um, well, it just seems a little bit daunting to add that much content, but there is so much content, which makes it great uh, to keep for a long time because then maybe over time we could add one expansion or another. And I will, that's one I will get everything for because I truly like it. It's very approachable. It's very easy to follow. It's very easy to teach though, not quick to set up, primarily because of the tree, but I've got the wooden one. So I'm actually considered, do I leave that out? Do I put it away? I'm not sure yet. Curious what other people do with their tree, but um, it's, it's not a quick right setup, but it's not a long setup either. So it's, it's, it's like in the medium range. So that's pretty much why it sits where it does for me in the three, the three area. You know, I you think know it's, it's, go oh, ahead, Ryan. Well, I was going to say, ahead. you know, what's funny is I really love Everdell. I didn't even consider it as a worker placement game because yeah. for some reason the tableau building mechanic yeah. is what's really stuck in my head. Mm -hmm. And I think of that as a, as a tableau builder. But I mean, that worker placement aspect of it's, gaining those resources is vastly important. But my mind just goes right to I'm playing cards out. I'm building my little city and creating these little combos, you know. Well, I, I love Everdell. Games of all time. One of my yeah. favorite games of all time. I was gonna, just going to say, I wonder if Everdale would be as popular as it is if it didn't hold that kind of uh, appeal graphically that it's it has. Beautiful. Like it's That's beautiful. true for a lot like, of games, though, honestly. I mean, but I, uh, but not no, the game I'm going to mention next, I, for sure. I got to say, say with Everdale, if I can just defend it to that statement, is that, it, yes, the production quality is excellent. Like right down to the little squishy berries, yes. which I totally love. Uh, but you yeah. strip all that That's stuff so off. Awesome. 
and it's a very approachable worker placement tableau builder whatever you want to say but yep. it is it is exactly that and the wonderful art makes it approachable to an audience that may not be hobby gamers which is again right. how this, i built my list so and this game is a pro this is the perfect example for like when production meets a great mm -hmm. game like yeah. mm -hmm. it is like the, like you're like all right well all these games are overproduced it's like no 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 this is the perfect example of like when it all works you know like i was actually like that for a year where i was like yeah this production da da da, da it must not be that great because people are loving it at the convention and then about a year later i kind of saw how it played and i was like oh man i got that to the table i was like this game is fantastic you know i was a year late <laughs> this game yeah. is fantastic you know i'm yelling from the rooftops squishy berries everything ever done squishy berries give me give me give me squishy crunchy berries. berries thank Love you them. crunchy berries all right. Close quote. Aren't you bears? <laughs> okay, so we're on to number two. Jeremy, take it away. Uh, this is going to be a surprise because it's not technically a worker placement game. It is because it has worker placement in it, but it's not traditionally labeled as a worker placement game. Uh, it's Nations. And to this day, Nations is one of my favorite games of oh. all time. Like, I l absolutely adore that game. And it's just the opposite of Everdell. It's like, incredibly ugly to look at it's always been ugly but the gameplay is so good in that it's a civ game in which you're controlling a nation just like a civilization like sid meyer civilization or something like that but there's a, a couple things that this game does really really well um one of those is that there is a lot of indirect player interaction like there are ways to mess with other people but there's no map at all in the game you're not directly uh, you don't have combat with other players directly. It's all kind of like minor screwage, which I love and it, I absolutely love in the game. And the worker placement to this day, there's nothing quite like it. You're placed, well, kind of like Twa, but not really. You're placing your workers on the cards that you acquire, but you have to be careful not to tip the balance on your like production and all these other things you have to worry about at the end of the round. So you're always adjusting your economy every single round, the way that you do combat in the game, the way you raise your military, the way you produce things. It's so good. Like I absolutely love nations and um, it's ugly. Like have yeah. you guys seen this game, like it's oh, not yeah, pretty I, to look I played at nations. It was like a four hour experience. Well, four hours. Well, that seems really a, long. That's, a, that's another story for another. It, it was maybe a little less, but the people that I was, or the person that was supposed to be teaching it, also obviously didn't remember how to play it. Mm. So, oh. like, there was, oh. uh, it was. Was it, was it five players so as well? That's what, it was five player game. And that's oh. why I've been saying I, I really want to give that one a second chance because it, it just wasn't a great experience because it's hard. A game like that that's that complicated, the, the person that's teaching it has to know the game inside yeah. and out. Or it just falls apart. So I, I we should play it sometime. Well, I'll, 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 I'll give you guys a little teaser, and this is all I'm saying. Be prepared for 2021. Oh yeah. Oh okay. There you go. <laughs> well, so we, some, dude, some, you know we don't get to play until that's, that's the teaser. It's the shirt, man. It's the shirt. He is really flossing hard. <laughs> Ladies are flirting with him in the chat. He's popping his collar. It is ridiculous in here. <laughs> oh my god. Feeling himself no, tonight. No collar pops yet. Feeling right. himself tonight. He's winking at the audience. What is this? Goodness. Little wink, little audience wink. Little fourth wall breaking. Uh, all right. I can't hold back my love for nations, Ryan. <laughs> you're number two. two. My number yeah. two. So this is. One of my top games of all time. This is The Voyages of Marco Polo. Oh, I think this is a great game. Surprising. It is technically a dice placement game where you are placing your your workers are basically dice. And the, the number value of that dice is going to determine a lot of different things from which actions you can take to how many times you can take an action. Um, but I love the history behind the game of you know, Marco Polo traveling uh, across, trying to find China uh, eventually, um, but stopping at all these different places along the way. And the cast of characters is very cool. Um, you have a lot of cool powers that let you do a lot of cool things. And there's, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's a really, really solid game. Now, of course, Marco Polo 2 has come out since, and I really like it. I've only played it twice, so I don't think I've played it enough to call it one of my favorite worker placement games. But I have played Marco Polo so much. And yet, I don't feel like there is a dominant strategy. I don't feel like you can sit down and say, even if you get the same character you got last time, the way that the board is laid out, it's different. The way your travel cards come into your hand is different. So you're playing a different game with different strategies every time you play. And I, I everyone knows I love Marco Polo. So I think, of course, it was going to be on this list. I'm really looking forward to Marco Polo 2 
coming over to the States because it keeps the core of what makes Marco Polo good, but fixes a lot of my issues and really expands it out uh, with some really fun new mechanics as well. So try that one too. I I gotta say, like, I, I, we got lucky enough to play it. Essen and Jeremy picked it up, uh, played it a couple of times and, and I, I'd only played Marco Polo a couple of times as well, but of the two, just in direct comparison for me, I definitely like the newer version better, but they're both great games. I agree. I think I think the first one, the, the biggest problem I've always had with the first one is that the, there are some characters that can be used in two players that are way too powerful in a two-player game. Yeah. Um, when when they're paired with another one that's not as good, uh, and that can really throw off a person's game. So, but I've been that's totally- my only issue. I've been told, like, too, that everybody can be powerful in that game, apparently. Yeah, but in a a, a two-player game, it's a little different story. But, of course, the Agents of Venice expansion, I think, does fix that a little bit. If your character's not Um, as powerful, you can still get some more powers, kind of, by putting your agents in Venice. And it's got some... That brings just some cool new ideas. So, real quick, I'm just going to pop in and note off, since Kevin uh, from our channel is also in the comments with David... uh, he wanted to share his list uh, that I asked him to a moment ago. Dinosaur Island, Barbarians the Invasion, Everdell, Whoa. Zulkin. He does love it. And Near and Far. Ooh. I knew he loved oh, Barbarians. Oh, I remember Barbarians. He loves yeah, Barbarians. Yeah, he loves Barbarians. All right, Jeremy well, I've not played that in a while. Oh, uh, number two? Yeah. Oh, goodness. Yeah. Oh, my God. Shout out to, to the heart. Oh, my God. We're bringing it home. Ah. Oh. Tony Bodell, thank you so much for making Snowdonia. Now, let me yeah, tell you, yeah. Snowdonia, oh, goodness. You want to talk about theme. Hey, man, I am from the hood. <laughs> like, I never thought I'd like a game about, <laughs> about going, taking out coal and mining and all the way up the hill. Who would think of that, man? Like, like honestly, that's not a game I would think I love. Um, but, yeah, it is a very easy work placement game. You're trying to figure out where your resources are going to go. You're making your way up. I should also put a slash in there with nice cup of tea, Alabari. Yeah. Mm. I should slash that because it's a more streamlined version. But really, you're working your places, uh, you're placing your workers, gathering resources, opening up this track, um, and you're working your way up. Now, where this game excels is all of its expansions that come in this. And they have this master set box here. And what they do is they add scenarios that don't focus just on like, they focus on like building a whole bunch of trains. Or like you become like a, almost a different worker. Um, you're doing different things, or you're you're focusing on gathering stuff. They actually make it into different games. And Alibari is the expansion of that because I talked to the designer. The designer said that's an expansion. He's like it was an expansion that they thought was too big for uh, for the game because he like I said these expansions are super thematic um, and different. And he actually made that into Alibari, which is a very streamlined version. And I mean, like, you don't have that restriction and that slowness. It definitely opens up quite a bit Mm -hmm. unless you get bad weather because this game has to do with weather and it can be very slow if you don't have good weather. (laughs) Um, So, yeah, it's it's just, man, that game's great. I never got tired of playing that game. Shout out to Ricky Royal, by the way, for that one. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, he is a solo solo man and he really got me into that game. So, yeah, I really, really love that game. I haven't played. Go ahead. I was going to say, I haven't played Snowdonia with you, but we have played Alibari together. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that was probably yeah, one of the, the best experiences we've had. Like, that was so much fun. We played that on the... Um, Gen Con live was it Gen Con live stream? Mm-hmm. No, yeah. no. Oh, that was the Essen live stream. Right. Right. Man, that yeah. was... Yeah, we played it as a three-player game. And, <laughs> you know, I think, Ryan, was it you and I that played it as a two-player game? We did play it as two. It was way better yeah. at three. Oh, I remember that. Gosh, a three-player game. It was a blast. It came out to a pretty interesting turn. And me and Jeremy looked at each other, and I was like, I think I just made the wrong choice. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, he was grinning. And I was like, I know there's the right choice, and there's a wrong choice. And he was just like, yep, brother, I took the wrong choice. (laughs) Jeremy, I just, I want to know, I want to know from you directly, because I have not played through all the scenarios of Snowdonia, but everyone tells me I have to play the goat scenario. Is this this the thing? dude, dude. There's so like there's just so many scenarios in here that are so fun. Like, and and the hard thing was is for years you could only get three of them, so you could only get three, and you had to buy a box that had two. And there was one that was kind of like a promo, I think, or something. But now that you have all of them, there's a whole new set of things to discover. Um, Where the yeah, deluxe edition just came out, right? The that, yeah, it's it's worth every single dollar. You get all these ridiculous meeples. Now they made it, you know, heavy production. Um, 
that wow that 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 game's a wow you know and i would never think that i would like something like that but gameplay over everything there you go yeah so before cool. i dive into Here. mine i'm going to address a few of the comments so uh, somebody brought up agizia needing to check it out and I, Jeremy, yeah. that's one of up on your high on your list. You mentioned at the beginning of the stream. It's definitely one that I, I dabble again, wanted to maybe put in the list for myself. Um, we've also got people asking, has anyone mentioned brew crafters yet? Uh, I know uh, Dude. somebody mentioned Dude. that to me game. recently. Brew crafters is solid. I have not played it. Uh, and then Godfather a is another one that uh, has been brought up in the that's, comments. That's pretty yeah. good. So. You know what? And that thing, that game, this is the thing. It's a good game, but it's it could be too thematic for some mm. people. Godfather, uh, like dropping right. car bombs like, and it stuff. It actually could be too thematic because it's like, man, yeah. I could keep getting to swim with the fishes thing and it's yeah. just ruining everybody's yeah. game. Yeah. <laughs> oh, also Rajas <laughs> like, was brought up. And the drive-by, <laughs> the drive-by action, like once you do the drive-by, it's like, you just ruined my entire game, which I don't mind. It's thematic, but it may be too thematic for some people. Listen, which, which game did you mention, Karen? A couple of them here. There's are uh, running in now, but uh, Rajas, uh, Hero Quest, mm -hmm. yeah. and Pixie Queen. Yeah, that's yes. Gary in the comments, uh, by the way, by the way talking about Pixie, Pixie Queen. Queen. He loves that, Pixie that's Queen. That game experience. Underrated, he said. I remember Jeremy. Yeah, you loved it, Jeremy. You and yeah, Gary both loved it because it was so punishing. I Very just felt like I was getting pun like getting punched for like an hour. Like I just kept making all the wrong decisions, and the, the pixie game, queen is like, "No." The <laughs> game is like it, you whip your workers, like you punish your workers. Oh my! Literally. Oh my gosh! Yeah, yeah. I think you well, you're like a bad queen. You're like an yeah, evil right. queen, and you're, they're like the little imps that do stuff right yeah. for you. Yeah. You start with a mass amount of negative points, right? Yeah, think, yeah you have to crawl oh out of positive. Call and, yeah, yes. positive. And Luke's in the comments. For, very for Jeremy, trip. Luke's in the comments still. And he said, wait till you see Whistle Mountain. So we'll all have to look out I for know. that one coming around oh. the corner here. No. So for me, this one departs, and, and this is where we start to depart a little bit from where I go more into hobby, I think probably more into a hobby, heavier game than your typical... And that's just because of how much I really enjoyed this from every single time from the initial prototype I played, and that is Crystal Palace. I truly love this game, uh, and I'm not very good at it. Like, <laughs> I'm pretty sure you guys have wiped the floor with me every time we've played. Um, I think I did pretty good when we first saw it at Gen Con uh, and got to get that for early look at the prototype, but there's just so many interesting things that you can do and you have to watch all these different uh, actions that everyone else is taking. And, and really it's a little bit mean and we all know I enjoy mean things, even when it's not yeah. to my benefit. Yeah. So um, I don't know, this is one, and I know I'm surprised I didn't see it pop up on anybody else's list just because of how much we enjoyed playing it. But um, I think it's great. And, and well, right I, back I to the whole know. capstone killing it last year thing. It was yeah. uh, one of one of the amazing yeah. uh, releases from capstone here in the States. And uh, it will definitely be played many, many, many more times. Yeah, it's a cool game. Like the, the ability to set your dice to whatever you want to set it as is really unique. Like most games you have to roll and then manipulate those dice in some way. Like this is... You just said them all to sixes, but you're going to have yeah. to pay for them, right? So yeah. it's, it's it does things in a unique way. There are some... I've played that game a couple times since I think we either reviewed it or talked about it in our top ten. And there's a little things about that ancillary board. Ryan, do you remember the name of that? The track that moves up like oh, a Oh, the, pu the publicity track? Yeah, like that doesn't feel like fully fleshed out. But other yeah. than that, everything else in the game is, is, is really, really good. And that's another one of those games that um, it's, it's just... For me, it's really pretty to look at. Like I like the old yeah. school look of that game. Like it's it's just really cool. I so. have a really I have a really quick Crystal Palace story in that I played this game with Isaac Childress, oh, the designer yeah. of Gloomhaven. And anyone that knows this guy, he has a math brain that puts so all focused. of us to shame. He learned the game, he looked down at the board and he goes, Oh, okay, I know what to do. And then proceeded to just make every possible move that got him just ridiculous amounts of points that he <laughs> had planned out from just like reading the rule book, not even ever having played the game. And I think that's actually a testament to the game. I mean, yeah. when you have a game that can be solved mathematically, like there's a wide variety of gamers that like that, the puzzle of how to solve a game. <coughs> and Jeremy, I know you enjoy that aspect of a game as well. 
Yeah. But this game can really be mathed out. Now, I am not good enough to math it out. But there are moments when you, like, get it to work and you just feel like you're, like, the smartest person in the world. But, you know, it's it's mis- it's a misleading feeling, that's for sure. So I got this one and I haven't played it yet. I'm excited, though. So we've had a few people <coughs> ask that we recap. Uh, so I'm going to pop up on the screen here for those that tuned in late. So this is what we just ended. And if you guys want to know how I have these listed... It starts with Jeremy, then me, then Ryan, then Jeremy again. So that's the list, and that's the same for all of them. So here's number two. We just finished. Here's number three. Four. Hmm? And five. So we're getting ready to jump into number one here. So let's do it. Drum roll. Jeremy, take it away. Yeah, I... I, I'm the absolute most predictable person in you the are, face of the earth when it comes to one know game. What you're going to say? Yes. Right. It's it's twa. Like it's yep. my number one game of all time. Still, uh, I I just love the game. And Ryan, you already mentioned everything I could possibly mention about it. I will say that Ladies of Twa, um, if you like the game at all, you need to play with that too because it adds yet another element that you need to consider uh, when you play, and just more avenues to uh, score victory points that aren't apparent in the first game. I do feel like Twa. Um, needs more cards, more variety. Uh, even with like the little mini expansion stuff that you can get, mm-hmm. is there's not a lot of cards that you're going to use. Like this is a game that could feel like Agricola, where you have 20 different white cards, 20 different yellow cards, you know, 20, 30 of those, where each game is going to be vastly different. I played the game enough to have seen every single possible combination that you can see in this game. I still love it, and I still yeah. think it does things in uh, a unique way that's not emulated in other games like the ability to buy dice uh from other people's pools but still come out negative if you play those dice poorly uh it's just really really unique plus that communal raid system at the bottom uh, it's it's just a solid game like it, it deserves more attention and as the years pass people are going to start to forget it and it's my job to keep letting people know that you need to play you need to play twa it, it's Until a really a new- good game until a new edition comes out, maybe. Well, there, there's a Twa Dice game that's coming out. Yeah. I'm not sure if it's this year or next year. I know. Year, when is that coming? Yeah, I, I, played, I, I played the print and play version of it, so there you go. All right, All right Ryan. I've even played I've... that. Yeah. All right, now my number one worker placement game is not my number one game of all time, but it is definitely in my top five games of all time, and this is Russian Railroads. I think that this is absolutely like a pinnacle worker placement game for me. Uh, there is so many cool things you can do in this game, and but it is very, very tight. I mean, you are very limited in the amount of actions you can take. And the whole goal of the game is to kind of build out these railroads by laying like different types of track. You can upgrade that those tracks over time, like four different types of upgrades. Meanwhile, you have like an engineering track and you can slot these different bonuses. You're upgrading your train engines. It's a train themed game, but it is not a what you would think about. It's not a route building game. It's not a 18xx style game. I mean, it is very much a worker placement game. And while the base game of Russian Railroads might have some strategies that are stronger than others, they have expansions in the form of American Railroads and German Railroads that both bring interesting things. So between these three different uh, expansions for this game, there's such a wide variety of content. I don't think I will ever get bored playing it. I mean, I think I could play Russian Railroads forever, and I think they could come out with new expansions that keep the same basic mechanics. And It is maybe by far the tightest worker placement game. It's that one where you're always wishing that you just had one more turn or just one more worker because oh, yeah. you're always just a little bit short of what you want to do. But man, that game is solid. My my wife and I just recently, uh, at the end of 2019, went through all three of those games again because they've been sitting on our shelf for a while. And you're right, there there's not another worker placement game that is as satisfying as pulling off combos in Russian Railroads. And those combos yeah. can be enormous, like getting dozens of points at a time from doing one or two actions and building up to it. It's extremely satisfying game to do that. And it's extremely hurtful when you watch other people do it. You're like, <laughs> oh my gosh. How many points did you get? How am I, yeah. I how am I going to make that up? And then the next turn, you're like, oh, I just made 36 points on a turn. Okay, it, yeah. it's that fight where, like, most games are, you know, under 100 points, maybe over 100. This is like 300 points, 400 yeah, points. You if get, you're like, really good at it, you're like, game, holly yeah. cow! All right, it's it's just super satisfying to do that. All right, all right, uh, uh, Jay. Oh man, 
Oh, this is easy. I'm just going to bring it right over here to me because it's always right next to my table. And that is oh. Robinson Crusoe. That's t- always at my table. It, it needs to be within an arm's reach at all times. Like I, just, <laughs> so mean. I just grab it right here. Ignacy, I love you. I love you. We should get a beer together sometime because <laughs> I'll just stare at you because you're awesome. <laughs> That's a hard game, though. That is a difficult game. Punishing. Very Punishing. Difficult game and it is exactly what i want i like i'm a glutton for punishment i like that kind of stuff um and i like that game where it feels like this is an insurmountable task you can't finish it um it's always going to take you to the brink and i like that like it's built that way and i like games like that atlantis rising was one of be one of my games on my list it's because it's going to happen whatever it is for that scenario it's going to get real tight and you got to make some choices and even when it like hits the button, like you're like, oh my god, it's about to happen. You still have a chance. You feel like you have a chance. And even though you have some bad die rolls, you're gonna prepare. You're gonna weather the storm, literally or not. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, that game is great. And it keep it's a gift that keeps on giving. They add different mm-hmm. smaller scenarios. So if you've been with this for a long time, you have raiders that you can go attack. You got non thematic stuff like solving of crime. You got all kinds of different things they've added to it. And they have the curse. They have a campaign that you can go through. Um, and a lot of people don't talk about that because, you know, some of that stuff wasn't readily available. But if you are a fan of Robinson Crusoe, they have a chest that's coming out. It's 70 bucks. It's going to have every promo they've ever made, wow. every scenario they've ever made. And for some reason, I'm buying that just so I make sure I have absolutely <laughs> everything. So All in one box. In one box. <laughs> right. Yeah. So you it's said like, chest, I gotta so make I'm sure imagining it's a very thematic, yeah. like actual like it's wooden chest. Be awesome because I have, I have ten scenario cards outside of both of these. So I'm like, is there any more? So, <laughs> so I have a lot of scenario cards. So I'm do like, what's have, going on here? What am I missing? You, so do you have the Voyage of the Beagle? People are asking that that yeah, because it because it was such a low run, I had to track it down. I had to check it down. You I, can't find that game anywhere. You can't find it anywhere. But I think I think you nailed one of the aspects too. Like you had mentioned that versus um, Atlantis Rising. Like I always feel like those really hard games. Like if I beat Atlantis, Atlantis Rising, I'm not sure I'm going to go back and play it again. Like right. I beat it once, and I don't know if I need to beat it a second time. Second time. Yeah. But as far as that's concerned, with Robinson Crusoe, you have all those scenarios to try out. Like if you beat right. a scenario, you're like, I don't have to go back to this one for a long time because I have all these right. other ones. That's to me what stands that above all those other games that are in that same vein where it's basically a competition against the game itself to figure yeah. out. Yeah. King uh they have a King Kong expansion, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> they, do. they have so many they interesting do. expansions in that game. Uh but yeah, I mean, I, I definitely understand that. There's like a little bit of, of that idea where like when you beat a cooperative game that is known to be tough, that has that crescendo to it. It's like, oh, this is great. But then if you eke it yeah. out, you're like, eh, I guess so. Where you're like, hey, try these other things. And you're like, no, I beat it already. Right. <laughs> it's it was like, like a video the, game. It, it was like the grizzled. Thing to it. it was like the grizzled yeah. for me from Come On. Oh, like, yeah. I beat that oh. once. I tried dozens of times and I finally beat and I'm like, why at this point like i there's yeah. no way i'm gonna punish myself again to try beat it again so well i think hey, so. that's what what grizzled has done and what robinson crusoe has done because they know that so they introduced these campaigns we haven't yeah. played through the grizzled campaign i know that came out a few years ago from come on uh but it, you're right jeremy it brings in new life now yeah. me personally i've never beat robinson crusoe i have never beat it so i haven't either hmm. interesting jay how many times have you beat what's your percentage on that game. Oh, of uh, uh, Robinson Crusoe? Yeah. Uh, okay. I would say in that 35, 40% of the time. Because I have like a little bit of a strategy that at least lets me sustain at a certain point. Like I kind of have like a build this shelter strategy. So I get through one part of the game feeling pretty good, feeling mm-hmm. okay. Uh, and I'm also a big time hunter. So I take a lot of wounds and mm-hmm. I get the food. I get a lot of things that you need right away. I'm not afraid to risk it. That's the difference between me and a lot of the Robinson Crusoe players. Like, I'm super aggressive. And that's kind of how I play games anyway. It's like, let's go hunting. Let's go find these mysteries. Let's go. <laughs> I'm an adventure person. So, oh, no, I get that. I get yeah, that. So that that's kind of my move with that game. And I have so much fun every time I play that game. I just, it's so fun and so thematic. It's in my top three games of all time. It's just so fun. 
And this is why you play solo because nobody else is crazy enough to go with you on right. these. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't. Nobody wants to play that game. <laughs> right. I like those games, man. They're so punishing. I'm like, no, I can't. I can't take it, man. So, I have enough stress in my life right now. So Dean wants to know, uh, Jeremy Howard, how many solitaire games do you have? And I guess I want to know: Do you mean games that have solo or that are strictly solo? Yeah, I think he. I think he means solo or solo a uh, bow, as we say. Every every solo, single one uh, of his bow. games. Um, I want to say, out, let's say out of my collection, which I try to keep around 200, I kind of keep around 200. I would say, just even looking at this wall, uh, I'm going to say uh, 60%, 60%, 70%. Awesome. Like they can be paid solo, but um, yeah, if they have a variant, maybe I'll try it. Um, but it's still got to be a great game for me to even look at it. But I, yeah, I have quite a few solo games. Quite a few. Question for you on solo to follow up that is, like, do you have of that sixty percent? How many of those are actually ones that you'll play the solo? Because it's not like how many of those felt tacked on to you versus how many are actually good solos? Oh, I eliminate those. You do. I, I eliminate those games. I just absolutely eliminate them. And I, you know, just because you play so many games, you can kind of sniff it out anyway. Mm -hmm. um, and I always tell people, this is why I tell I can't tell anybody what to do with their money because I'm a big person on researching games. Mm -hmm. I read a lot of rule books. If you were to steal my book bag from me, I'd be screwed out of a lot of rule books. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I read a lot of rule books. I go on BGG. I'll even print them out because I just want to take them with me and read. And if I don't sniff it outright, um, there's a game I'm thinking of right now, and I don't want to say what it is. <laughs> but I just like sometimes they'll write it in the manual. And they'll be like, hey, this is just for training. And I'm like, no, I don't want to be trained. I'll get rid of this. Yeah. So, uh, you know, they have to have their own a full experience. I need to feel like it. And I will tell you that a lot of Euro games, honestly, they're so gloves off that they are solitaire. So I always say that some Euro games and people love to play with other people. I'm like, we're just playing a solitaire game times four. <laughs> like, solitaire. That's you true. know, it's like, don't tell me you don't play solo. You're just standing there with people playing solitaire. Yeah. Nobody's pushing anybody. Nobody's touching anybody. So it's like, that's how I tell people about solo games. It's like, that's kind of solo in a nutshell. Very cool. Very cool. All right, Kira, we still haven't got your number oh, one. Oh, yeah, my turn. So uh, this one's fairly new, and I, I, I'm i not sure there's anything I don't like that's coming from Johnny Pack right now, and that's Sierra West, y'all. So oh, I am not Airways. huge on Western themes in general, but this one got me good. And I, I love the different... I just love all the interesting huh. things that it does with the, the slotting of the cards and the decision making there and how you're moving your workers across those two paths. And if you're going to move them down to the cabin area or not uh, and, you know, risk losing them for a period of time. But then, you know, that balance between do I get the points or do I wait it out? Do I want to make sure I'm, you know, there's just so many different things you can do in this game. Uh, and then on top of it, it has all of those modules as well. So what is it, five modules in this one? So, um, and, I, and I could probably rate each of those modules as well, but mo most of them I like. They're definitely ones I would play more than others, but it's just, it's such an interesting worker placement game and I really enjoy what it does and um, exciting to see even more coming from Johnny Pack over the years ahead because yeah. I know it's, he's done nothing but make some really phenomenal games. Uh, and to help develop some as well. So great game. That's Sierra West. Cool. Yeah. Uh, I, I know we're already uh, about nine minutes over, but I'm just going to go around the table real quick. Is there any games that you guys considered that almost made your list? Uh, oh, sure. That, I, that, that didn't, Ryan? Well, you can go ahead and start. I had a lot, but I mean, because what we said earlier, Kira said it exactly. Like Paladins of the West Kingdom, I really thought about, but I just, I haven't played it enough yet to know if that's going to be a game that in five years I'm still going to be playing. Absolutely. I mean, I think the newest, the newest <laughs> game on my list might be Feast for Odin, and that's still like four years old. And I know that all five of these games are games that I still play. And I, I hope that in five years I'm still playing Paladins, but I, it might get old because Paladins, I love the way it works together, but once you kind of solve the puzzle, you, you can kind of just do the same thing every game you play. And uh, it depends I, on the, car, the Paladin depends, that you get to. Right. But I mean, like the order that you do things is different. But when you see a yeah. certain paladin, you're like, "Oh, I like this paladin. I know what I'm going to do." But I, I don't want to discount it because yeah. it was one of my top games of the year. 
Uh, I just need to give it more plays and more time, uh, and probably an expansion to see if it if it makes it into my, maybe my top games of all time list. But man, I really debated what I would take off to put Paladins on there. Wow. Kira, uh, Kira, what Paladins about you? was definitely one of those for me. But if I just to pick a different one, it would be. Ooh, I definitely had several. I know I was sending them over to you guys yesterday, but uh, Empires of the North. I really yeah. like Fifty First State a lot, and then now uh, Empires of the North takes all that stuff I loved about Fifty First State and Imperial Settlers and makes it into a wonderful game. I know Jeremy Howard, you've played the heck out of this. I just haven't played it <laughs> enough, but I love, love, loved it. Loved the play I had with it. Definitely see this being on my list in the long term cool yeah. jay jay how what do you got now that's you know what's crazy that just shows you how much i love the top five games because that was my number one game for last year <laughs> and i'm trying not to play it all the time on our channel <laughs> 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 that just shows you how much i love this top five but mine has to be the artemis Ooh. project this i've game, not played that oh not me gosh. either i haven't played it either oh so good oh gosh it's so good yeah, this one, dice placement, every single location, every die counts. And it's super tight, and it's a rush to get those small resources. And you're like, every round you know they're, they're, there's not enough. You know there's not enough. And maybe you have to go on journeys, but if you go on journeys, people start pushing you out. And maybe if you don't have, you know, if you have too many dice in one area, people will go like, why don't we push that to the side so I can get those resources? And all the while, you don't have enough time to build all the buildings you want to, to build an engine. It is such a smart game. And I, and I always tell that's the, the sign of a good game is like when certain things get real tense real quick. And in that game, you never want to be the first player. Because as soon as you place that die, it's almost like putting in a bet. It's like, oh, wait, he put in the first die. What are we going to do? And now everybody's like tensed up. So I love that type of game. Uh, yeah, that's a, that's a, fa a fantastic game. And I, I won't say what's coming in 2021 either. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, well, we, hey, we get to say know it. some things say sometimes. It. But there is something coming in 2021. Regarding cool. That so, Jeremy, how about you? Good what about deal. you, Jeremy? I know you yeah. had some. Yeah, I have. Uh, I mean, I'll say one that I think is incredibly underappreciated and one that I think should never be forgotten. The, the Never Be Forgotten is Stone Age. I still own oh, that well, game. Yeah. Uh, I play it all the time with my wife. It's just a uh, it's a game that you should own probably even more than Twa because it's just a very simple game that you can teach anybody. Like it's it's the most simple worker placement game, but it gives you the core root of what worker placement games are all about. And even to this day, years after it's been released, it still holds up extremely well. And then the uh, game I think is really underappreciated is um, Village from Eggert's oh, yeah, Beyond Stronghold. It's is really good. Village is a really good game, especially with both of the expansions. It's a generational game in which you have workers that get older and they eventually will die off and you have to bury them in a graveyard. Um, but that's not what the game is about. It, it's about using your workers in very unique ways to get uh, benefits from different places on the board. Uh, it's it's good. It's it's a really, really good worker placement game. And uh, I still own it. Like I've owned all the expansions. I played at least once a year and it's it's a solid game. You know, it's, it doesn't get mentioned enough. That reminds me, I, I do want to mention one more. And, and this didn't make my list or any of our lists because I think we have kind of moved past it. But it's easy to forget that there are gamers out there that don't play worker placement games. And I want to say that Lords of Waterdeep still holds up, I think, as a great entry-level worker placement game. If you're new Absolutely. to worker placement or you're new to the industry at all and want to know how to kind of learn these mechanics, I learned from playing Lords of Waterdeep. So it will always have a, a, a good place in my heart, even though... It's just not the kind of weight that I like to play now. It does, you know, whatever. But we can't forget that you know those games brought us to where we are to today. So I think, yeah. right. So I think that that's worth honorably mentioning as well. Yeah. So cool. Well, guys, thanks for uh, going through this list. Everyone, thanks for watching. Jay Howe, uh, hey. thank you for joining us and letting us, us know what your top five worker placement games are. I honestly want to know now what all of your top games are right? <laughs> in a wide variety of things because it was very different than ours because yeah. we play together. I mean, the three of us play together all the time and you're stuck up there in the north and you yeah. need to move down here to Indianapolis so you're with us and, <laughs> and play more. But think, again, thank yeah. you for joining us. Um, if anyone has their top five list that they want to mention below or which yeah. list you like, which games you like, make them in the comments uh, below to be entered to win also a Gizia, which yeah. in and of itself is a really, really right. good worker <laughs> placement game that you need that you need to play if you haven't played it before. It's it's really smart. It uses worker placement in a very unique way. So uh, I would grab this one and play it. And if you don't 
want to learn the rules, I'll teach you, Agizia. We'll just oh, hop oh, on Tabletopia. Sure. So there's my oh, invitation well. to join her. Well, and uh, don't uh, forget again, to join for our watching. Discord if you want to come and talk about it with us on, yeah. in between, too, <clears throat> between shows. So uh, Discord is in our description yeah. below. Sorry, Jeremy, for interrupting. I'm in the chat. I'm in the chat. Be in the mm -hmm. chat. Comment. Mm -hmm. I love to go in there and comment, too. In here, too, as well. So I always check the comments. Trust me, I do. Oh, so yeah. get up in there, and I cool. will respond. Get up well, in there from we Jeremy Howard. We will see you guys on Chit Chat next Thursday. We don't know what the topic is. Uh, we'll make up something cool. And <laughs> we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.